So, so now let's move to the to the panel. Um, so, basically, uh, Professor Okubo will stay uh, in the session. He's not uh, one of the panelists, but he will stay uh, around with us. So, so if you have any question uh, to him specifically, we'll not take them now, but we'll take them during the Q and A um, session uh, at the end of the panel discussion. So, uh, basically, today's panel as I explained before, we'll delve into the implications uh, of open innovation, of the concept of open innovation in the case of the emergence of a new space uh, sector in Japan, a strong new space sector in Japan. For those of you who may not be familiar with the term, um, new space is an umbrella term that has no globally agreed definition. Uh, there are various ways of understanding what the new space sector is, um, but basically it is used to describe the, the mutations of the space industry in the last one or two decades. Um, and that is characterized by the emergence of new industrial actors um, with new business model and that are primarily driven by commercial ambitions. On the contrary, the traditional space industry uh, tend, and it still exists, both coexist. You still have the big contractors of the traditional uh, space industry. If we think about Japan, they would be big companies like Mitsubishi Electric Corporation, Mitsubishi Heavy Industry, that are companies that tend to rely more on the government demand and for which the government usually fund the initial major R&D um, uh, R&D uh, projects. Uh, and so to, to put it simply, usually a definition that I like to, to explain difference between old space and new space is who takes the risk, the financial risk? Is it the government by providing a big contract to space and defense contractors that will make the R&D, produce the satellite and then sell to the government? Or is the risk taken by the private sector itself based on its own funding, on funding from venture capital. Um, I, I think this is, there are other definitions, but that's a, that's a simple way to, to put it. Um, so now let, let's move directly into the, the panel session. So this panel is to put it simply are um, the best national experts in their respective fields and in their respective sectors uh, from uh, the government, academia and the industry. And, and what is even more interesting is that most of them are not stuck in one sector, but usually have experience across sectors and have a foothold in all three sectors of government, academia, and the industry, which makes it a really interesting panel. Uh, our first panelist uh, today was already mentioned by Professor Okubo. He's Professor Shinichi Nakasuka from the University of Tokyo. Uh, Professor Nakasuka graduated from the University of Tokyo in 1983 and obtained his PhD in aeronautics and astronautics in 1988. He worked at IBM Research from 1988 to 1990 and then returned to the University of Tokyo's Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics as a lecturer in 1990 before becoming associate professor and then professor in 2004. His main research areas include micro, nano and pico satellites autonomy and intelligence for space systems, novel space systems, and guidance, navigation, and control of spacecraft. He successfully developed and launched 13 micro, nano, and pico satellites, including the world's first CubeSat. Uh, he's a member of the National Space Policy Committee of the Government of Japan, which is the main body um, advising the government on space policy matters. And he's the president of the international uh, nonprofit organization, University Space Engineering Consortium that we call UNISEC Global. Thank you very much for, for being here today, Professor Nakasuka. Our second panelist uh, today is Mr. Shuzo Takada, who is uh, currently senior specially appointed professor at the Tokyo University of Science since October, 2020. He teaches government private sector relations in the management of technology course at the university and is dedicated to fostering the next generation of industrial talent. Previously, he served at, as director general of the Manufacturing Industries Bureau at the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, METI in short. 
uh, where he was responsible uh, to the government for the manufacturing industry, which accounts for, as you all know, a large part of Japan's economic activity. During his term, he worked hard to secure medical equipment for personal protection that are essential to the lives of the Japanese people in the midst of the global outbreak of COVID-19 that disrupted heavily supply chains. In addition, he promoted government's efforts to contribute to economic security in the midst of uh, historically rising uh, geopolitical risks. For what concerns uh, today's event, for three years, from 2016 to 2019, Mr. Takada served as the Director General of the National Space Policy Secretariat at the Cabinet Office. He has improved Japan's space policy, which had been weakly coordinated among individual ministries and enhanced it into a government-wide initiative. He has also incorporated the recognition of the importance of space activities in security in the National Defense Program. During his term, the National Space Policy Secretariat launched the quasi Zenith Satellite Service, so the, the Japanese um, GNSS service, and promoted cooperation with the United States on space situational awareness, also using quasi Zenith satellites. Thank you very much for being with us today, Mr. Takada. And the final panelist is Mr. Takayoshi Fukuyo, who is the founder and CEO of ArcEdge Space that was mentioned before, and an associate professor at the Center for Spatial Information Science at the University of Tokyo. After conducting Amazon forest research activity at the University of Tokyo Graduate School, he worked as a JICA expert at the Natural Resources Institute of the Ministry of Environment of Brazil. From 2009, he worked for the Consulate General of Rio de Janeiro and for the Japanese Embassy in Brazil. From 2013, he had engaged in Japanese space policy development at the National Space Policy Secretariat. After transferring to the University of Tokyo in 2017, he has been promoting industry academia government collaboration and international development utilizing space and geospatial information. Then, and that's the main reason why he's here today, in 2018, he founded ArcEdge Space, which was at the time called Space Edge Lab until January of 2021. And Arcage Space is a domestic leading developer and manufacturer of nanosatellite and nanosatellite services for various applications, such as Earth observation and satellite IoT for the SDGs, maritime digital transformation, and lunar communication infrastructure. So, as you can see, uh, we are really fortunate uh, to have these three panelists uh, that have a wide knowledge of the space sector, of innovation, and of various government policies on this matter. So let's start um, with the panel discussion. I will start uh, with a few questions on my side, but I encourage you to uh, raise as many questions as you want in the Q&A box, either in Japanese or English, uh, both are fine. So I would like to start with uh, Professor Nakasuka uh, and, and directly linking with um, Okubo Sensei's presentation. Um, your laboratory at the University of Tokyo is quite exceptional in the sense that it has generated three spin-off companies that simply put count among the most successful startups uh, in Japanese new space history. Uh, I will remind them Axel Space, Synspective, and the latest ArcEdge Space. How do you explain these achievements? What were the <laughs> primary factors that, that explain how your laboratory managed to so do real innovation, not only develop the technology, but transform it into something concrete, into a business, into applications. And in addition to explaining basically how you did that, um, what are you expecting uh, from the efforts currently made by the University of Tokyo, in particular, the Institute for Open Innovation? Mm. Okay, thank you very much for your <coughs> questions. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. The reason is very simple. The student work very hard. <laughs> so that is the most important reason. And the, so, so uh, let me add two more things. The first one is that one of the most important reasons for this achievement is that we actually have been developing the real satellite by ourselves 
not only conducting research or not uh, asking a company to develop satellite. We develop the satellite ourselves. In the university satellite project, we can and we should take a challenge in order to create a novel cutting edge technology because this should be a research. And also the tolerance against failure is far larger than the governmental project. So learn by doing is the main educational style in our laboratory, which I think lead to the establishment of such many startups. I tell my students to do decision-making by themselves, not asking me, do it yourself with a sense of responsibility. That is very, very important. Such attitude to decide by themselves, themselves can contribute a lot to the human resource training, which will lead to the project manager of Hayabusa 2, Professor Tsuda in JAXA, and the CEO of Axel Space, Dr. Yuya Nakamura, and so on. And secondary, I think that we have been conducting very intimate collaborations with many organizations, including established space companies, startups, and JAXA, and the National Astronomical Observatory or other institute. So we are creating a certain ecosystem with these organizations. Then varied and very dense information automatically come to our laboratory. And with such information, we can make very good strategy towards the next step. So that means, so the laboratory can be a certain kind of the place for open innovation. And in order to get such information, other companies want to join our ecosystem. And then the ecosystem grows. This kind of the cycle has been iterating. And as to the OI, so the OI helped us a lot. And the, I'd like to uh, ask OI to support in terms of the, something like a flexible management as to the such collaboration with the companies or institute, such as flexibility of usage of, usage of money uh, from such companies or exchange of human resource, temporary salary to persons who did the temporary jobs, contract on licensing and other, other IP issues and so on. So yeah, OI has been helping us a lot, but uh, if possible, I'd like to ask them like that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, and I think that that's really good that you, you explain the, this importance of um, a laboratory and, and universities in general that could help be the kind of, not necessarily coordinator, but kind of initiator of an ecosystem. Um, and I think that that's a really important point and that is perfectly in line with, with the concept of open innovation. But staying a bit on this, actually, um, with you, Professor Nakasuka, I, I remember that in the past, um, one reason why, um, let's say, small satellite flourished in Japan is also thanks to a past project in your laboratory called the Hodoyoshi project, mm -hmm. um, which was aiming at creating this, this ecosystem. Yes. Um, would you like to say a few words uh, about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think one of the important you know, outcomes of the Hodoyoshi project is that uh, we created a certain ecosystem, I'm uh, sorry, uh, supply chain network using the uh, medium or small industries. So we did not use the, uh, how can I say, uh, companies which already started the space business because uh, such company, the product is very expensive. So we find out uh, some small industry which has a very good special technology which can be applied to the space. And we told them how to change their technology to the space. And then we created a certain product and they continually have been uh, producing such product and selling them. So then we can obtain very cheap and very good uh, you know, quality uh, component within Japan. That has been one of the very important outcome of the Hodoyoshi project. And the many venture companies are from our laboratory and as other you know, laboratories already are also using the technology coming from such kind of the you know, supply chain. So this kind of supply chain is a very important. And also in the Hodoyoshi project, in, we invested a lot of money to Kyushu Institute of Technology to create a certain ground test facility. So then they can provide the many venture companies and university with a very good one-stop solution of the ground test. So such kind of the infrastructure is very, very important. And that is one of the outcomes of the Hodoyoshi. Okay. Mm. 
Thank you very much for, for clarifying that. And, and to be fully transparent to, to the audience, I, I used to be part of the laboratory of Professor Nakasuka. And, and, and that's true that one thing that I, I was impressed with uh, in, in the Japanese uh, supply chain for small satellite is the fact that there are many uh, small industrial companies, often family owned, that existed for generations um, that used to do small mechanical components, electrical components, and that kind of reinvented themselves uh, to be able to develop small parts for, for satellite. Uh, often not too complex things, but very useful then for, for small laboratories and startup to, to have the parts they need and, mm -hmm. and also relying less on, on products from abroad. And, and so th this gives me the perfect transition to Mr. Takada. So you had uh, senior respons responsibilities at both the cabinet office for space policy and the METI for manufacturing, which, were the, which are the two issues that we are, we are discussing. Um, the cabinet office in particular has greatly increased its influence uh, in the domestic space sector in recent years. Could you highlight uh, concrete actions that were conducted by both ministries, so both the cabinet office and the METI, in support of innovation uh, in the space sector, as well as react to, to what Professor Nakaska just said? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, in the space sector. Well, before moving on to that, let me just um, mention on when innovation happens. Everyone, please be reminded. Innovation, when it comes to innovation, there, when good technology is being utilized in an appropriate field, that's when we can think of innovation. We need a good field. And the space policy of the government in terms of science technology, well, the techniques was high, but in terms of utilization, uh, we needed to do more. And that was the kind of concept that was included in the 2016 Mitten Plan. And security is another important field for space. And to apply security is also creating a new demand in the space industry. That's what I think. And when we think of these innovation to create demand is another important thing. That should be one of the basic concepts. And I myself served also as the secretariat of the space. And, and this is something we were also thinking together with the offices of METI. And when I started getting engaged with the space sector, probably um, the reason that we have been able to contribute, um, the, there are actually three cases that I would like to share with you. Uh, all of you. One is that the services for the satellites, the QZSS, and this is when the Michibiki one was being launched. And on top of that, three other satellites were launched and 24 seven, a centimeter level and millimeter level signal has been received ever since. And that's why Professor Nakasuka has been um, guiding us very much in this technology. That's why we have been able to come up with this kind of accurate signals here in Japan. And we also get a very accurate positioning signal. And this has been taken for granted thanks to Michibiki signals. And the same thing is applied to Canopy and in the dash cam or the drive recorder. So the positioning data is a very important category. And that's another new, uh, creating a new innovation. And together with the cabinet and the METI, uh, we, there's another thing we should include is the risk money. Of course, we need funds and budget for innovation. And we no one knows if any innovation will succeed or not. But at the same time, we have to be concerned about the risk. That's why risk money is another important part. And that why, that's why we have this DBJ or other uh, funds. It's a public fund to take the risk in a midterm basis. And these have been helping us the uh, ventures in the space industry. And later, a lot of risk money started to emerge and various funds started to be attracted to this sector. and started to invest and that's how a lot of startups have been emerging 
And the third point is, well, we have to be cherishing the ideas. And even if we learn and get a lot of ideas from the EU policies, well, for example, to respect each other's ideas is something very important. We have been working on two initiatives. One is the conventional thing, which is the space utilization prize being given by the prime minister and um, prime minister then uh, Mr. Abe also joined the award uh, giving ceremony. So it's really a respected award. And um, Professor Kantan, you also mentioned about the Hodoyoshi project, right? That the Hodoyoshi project is exactly what was uh, received, what received the grand award by um, prime minister Abe at the time. And we have this S booster which is a, a awarding system to the space business model. And 10 million yen prize is being given to the award winner. And it's not just only the prize, but um, other support is given. Again, a lot of various ideas have been brought in. And like the arcade space, idea, Arc Edge Space idea was also being introduced and they also succeeded in fundraising and I think the Nikkei newspaper made an article on that. So that's how the cabinet has been um, doing the seeding of the innovation. That's what I believe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, th that's very interesting to, you added a very important second layer to, to building the ecosystem. That was the, the main uh, point of Professor Nakasuka. By, by showing basically what the government can do to, to help. And, and it's not just about funding, it's not just, um, so providing this new services like QZSS so that downstream businesses can be created uh, through that, uh, money to support risky projects, um, uh, initial uh, projects such as you mentioned the, the DBJ, the Develop Development Bank of Japan, uh, and also the aspect of kind of creating competition among ideas with, with prizes like S-Booster. And, and again, I have wonderful panelists because you, you give me the perfect transition to the third panelist, um, Mr. Fukuyo, um, whose company, Arcade Space, also benefited from, from this, um, this kind of framework. Uh, as Mr. Takara said, the initial idea for Arcade Space was presented at S-Booster. Uh, and, and I'm sure that other government initiatives were important in starting this, this business. So Mr. Fukuyo, um, first of all, congratulations. Arcade Space recently uh, raised a, a big amount of, of funding. Uh, it's one of the fastest growing new space startups in Japan. So I have two questions for you. Um, first, I think it would be nice if you could explain us a bit, what is the business of Arcade Space that we were talking about uh, from the start? And secondly, so you are a spin-off of um, the laboratory of Professor Nakasuka. To what extent uh, did Arcage benefit from, let's say, support from the university in terms of open innovation initiatives? And the same question for what I was just mentioning, um, to what extent Arcage space was helped in its early development by government initiatives of the cabinet office, of the METI, et cetera? ありがとうございます。えっと、ま、私のようなものがこのような、あの、偉大な方々とお話しさせていただくという理由が今分かったというかですね。Well, thank you very much. Uh, I now understand why I was asked to be here among the, the you know, uh, such a uh, uh, excellent uh, people. Uh, I think that uh, I have about a couple of uh, uh, points that I I'm asked to make, so I'd like to answer to your questions. Now, regarding our company, Arcage Space, mentioned many times already, uh, it is uh, one of the spin-off of the Tokyo University. And at the same time, as Mr. Takada has mentioned, uh, we were benefited by many uh, policies or initiatives offered by the government. So we are very much grateful for many support from the government or the school. And if you look at uh, my screen, just behind me, this is actually the real size, uh, but this is uh, the satellite uh, that's a six U size. It's about the 10 by 10 by 10. And this is a one U cube. And uh, now we have six units. So this is uh, what, uh, what we call six U. 
and our uh, business is primarily using 6U CubeSat. And uh, uh, as mentioned already, uh, Nakaska's uh, laboratory uh, have built uh, the technologies and uh, uh, together with the, the uh, uh, Professor Nakaska's lab laboratory and the talk, uh, we have started this business. Uh, actually, uh, the idea was to commercialize this uh, satellite. Uh, since uh, we developed the CubeSat for the first time, it was just a full uh, research. Uh, however, eventually, uh, just like in the case of Hodoyoshi, uh, we began to think of the business application. And now we have 3U and 6U as standard, and the cost of building it is becoming smaller and smaller. And we think that it's high time for us to start business so that we'll be able to change the society. Uh, it, the technology have come to that level already. And so far, uh, the, uh, the, uh, those uh, uh, Microsoft was uh, launched one by one from the laboratory at the Tokyo University. But if we have many of them, launch it, we'll be utilize uh, this constellation for various purposes, including making our life better. And it's not just for the Earth, but, you know, uh, we can maybe uh, create infrastructure by utilizing this technology. So the technologies have been developing very quickly and our ambition is very high. So uh, we are building uh, such satellite. Uh, we uh, will be changing the infrastructure of Africa. Uh, for example, by utilizing those technologies. Uh, the, uh, the, how uh, we were benefited from the IOI uh, while we were at the Tokyo University. Regarding that point, I'm originally from his laboratory, but actually, uh, that was not the case. As Kantan has mentioned, my specialty is uh, the forest or environmental development. And so, as Mr. Takara has mentioned, I am more interested in the application of satellite to make the environment better, make the society better, rather than, you know, the space technology itself. Uh, so, uh, we started to think about how we can change the infrastructure in Africa. And uh, regarding uh, the benefits of the IOI, actually we received many support from IOI, but uh, before that, uh, with uh, Professor Nakaska and others, I have been considering how to solve the social issues by utilizing microsats, and that requires the knowledge not just by the engineers, but of, uh, also people from maybe in the government or the people in the environmental issues, including forests. So uh, by having the people of all different backgrounds, we are able to create this company. So actually, for example, Rwanda, I'm involved. Uh, that's part of what we do to change infrastructure in Africa. And now uh, I am working on the building the maritime uh, network. Uh, it is now becoming possible because the, the satellites are becoming smaller and smaller and it makes it possible to challenge new things. So uh, in various field, various uh, areas of the economy and the society will be able to change, make a change with our technologies. And I think that, uh, you know, the, this is uh, in line with the spirit of the IOI because uh, we are able to talk and work with people with many different uh, backgrounds uh, with the help of the IOI. In terms of the government initiatives and the support, uh, we won the business contest. And at the time of the development stage, uh, we had uh, the opportunities for demonstration about technologies and we were also able to uh, use uh, the contract from the government and we are able to do the demonstration by utilizing those money and we are now also able to expand our business to the rest of the world uh, with the help of the METI and also the MEXT. So, Today, we are standing where we are as a business 
organization and within the open innovation ecosystem we will be able to work uh, with many different parties for example the business providers or data business uh, ventures or other people who will be eventually attracted to this ecosystem which makes me very much excited thank you very much uh, fukuya san for for this very comprehensive explanation and and that really highlights the importance of, of all the elements mentioned by by the previous panelists um, and so now I will I will turn to Professor Nakasuka again. First of all, thank you for starting to answer some of the questions, uh, providing written answers in the in the Q and A box. So to the audience, don't hesitate to to check the written answers also in the in the box. Um, so I want to mention something um, in that I that I mentioned in your biography. So apart from your roles at the University of Tokyo and at the Cabinet Office. You're strongly involved in a nonprofit organization called UNISEC, that is a university consortium uh, that you actually chaired since its creation in 2030. Could you explain, first of all, what UNISEC is and how important this kind of, of organization, so UNISEC or equivalent, um, how important it is in promoting open innovation in the Japanese space sector? Um, and in addition to that, what do you think the government can do to help organizations like UNICEF? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it's very, very important questions. So uh, let me first explain what the UNICEF is and UNICEF Global is. So first I started the UNICEF University Space Engineering Consortium, which is a university community to support the student activity of the satellite development in 2002 in Japan. And it has been very successful and now it has more than about 50 universities and gave birth to 58 university satellites within Japan. And since 2013, I have been promoting international version of UNICEF under the name of UNICEF Global. So this is the concept of the UNICEF Global. That means a please make a UNICEF type organization in your country and then connect together. That is a concept of the UNICEF Global. So the key concept is the importance and the uniqueness of university-based community. That is very, very important for the open innovation. So let me give some example of the features of the university. Almost all the countries have universities, even without space agency or space industry. And the professors sometimes support government space policy in emerging countries. And the universities have a strong workforce of students. So satellite development can be done very cheaply as it will be conducted as education. So besides the university is not usually seeking for profit, so can be open. So that is very important. And moreover, already universities all over the world have been connected to some extent internationally via joint research project or international conferences. Even there is no joint satellite project. And recently by using micro nano pico satellite, uh, which the, even the universities can develop, Universities can conduct practical space development activities and also by using IT and open data platform with free satellite data, universities can make spa uh, space utilizations far easier than before. By utilizing these strong features of universities and the recent technological development, I think the university can make very unique and special contributions to open innovation in the space sector in the world. So I think that this kind of the, you know, something like open type of the features of the university is a very, very important. And UNICEF Global is now have uh, 21 local chapters such as UNICEF Germany and the point of contact in 55 countries and regions and 188 university members, very, very big organization. And also uh, we got a, a status of the permanent observer in the United Nations. And through the joint activities such as technological conference, mission idea contest, cancer to training, and the joint project, this community is getting stronger. And in near future, I hope that INSEC Global will start a certain joint satellite project, which will contribute to the sustainability of the world or SDGs. As each country has its own special strengths and the social problems are to be solved. And every year we exchange such kind of the needs and the, you know, seeds. And then by, you know, such kind of the exchanging the information, we can make a certain kind of the open innovation. So this is the concept of the UNICEF Global. 
So in conclusion, open atmosphere of universities will accelerate innovations by integration of such varied technology and needs. So this is a future concept of the UNICEF Global. And also as to the governmental support, I need money. <laughs> of course, we need money. So this activity is very, very important because if we continue this kind of activity, many emerging countries which just started the space you know, activities think that Japanese is a kind of the big brother. So it's a kind of the teacher. And we have been doing the very, uh, we have been having a very good relationship with them. So when, you know, they will grow up and they have a capability to do a space business or space activity, maybe the Japan can have a very good collaboration with them. So it's a kind of the investment into the future. So I, I'm telling this to the government, but the government did not get much money to us. So I think you know, most important you know, support from the government we want is something like a constant you know, financial support to this activity, okay? That's all, thank you. Mm. Thank you very much. And, and indeed that's very, very important. And so I want to, to emphasize um, this point that many countries are looking at Japan to learn space technology and to start their programs. Um, and, and most university professors like Professor Nakasuka often make the same comment that we need scholarships, money, but mostly scholarships, mm -hmm. so that as many foreign students can come and learn in Japan. And uh, that's actually something we are really interested in at the, the STIG program. And so I want to, to mention that to the audience. Uh, we currently have a, a big project that Professor Nakasuka is part of, and also Professor uh, Shiroyama, who will uh, speak a bit later, uh, which tries to look at exactly uh, what Professor Nakasuka mentioned, uh, how this kind of academic collaboration for capacity building can then spill over and help strengthen diplomacy and trade. Um, and so th this is a real investment on the future and that has been, as far as I know, having looked at many countries around the world that try to support country developing a program, Japan really has been the, the kind of um, best practice on, on this front. So, so I encourage all people interested in this to look at, at what Japan is doing in terms of supporting developing countries in capacity building. And I will again step a bit outside of my role as moderator. I just want to say that I'm personally a big fan of UNISEC. I think it's really important what you're doing. Um, and it's, it's really valuable for many countries to establish either a UNISEC local chapter or at least something equivalent um, because they have the potential to develop space technologies, but they don't necessarily have the resources in universities. So pooling resources among different universities is really valuable. And also, I, I always like to, to explain that to, to people that I meet coming from developing countries who want to start a space program. Space engineering is not a pure field in a sense. It's a combination of a lot of fields of engineering. You need to know electrical engineering, mechanical, thermal, um, except for orbital dynamics that are very specific. All the rest, basically, all the countries have electrical engineer, mechanical engineer. The thing is, how do they work together to make a space system? And this kind of structure like UNICEF can help combine resources, but also various fields, various, uh, I would say, specialties of universities that can work together into making CubeSat, NanoSat, uh, et cetera. So yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned UNISEC. I think it's really important. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and, and now, actually, I, I will ask this question to, to all the panelists, uh, starting with um, Takada-san, Fukuya-san, and then Nakasuke-sensei. I want to hear that, because that, that's a critical question uh, for Japan that I was planning to ask you and that was asked also in the Q&A. So in, in the Q&A, one of the, the people who asked the question says, uh, Japan's space development is far behind the development of China, the European Union, the United States and Russia. And uh, it's predicted that India is taking over Japan. Um, we would like to hear your opinion on the basic strategy for the space industry to regain competitiveness and compete on an equal footing with advanced space countries. So I, I will rephrase a bit this question uh, and, and separate it into, into a few questions. First of all, 
is it true to say that the Japanese industry is not competitive? Um, and, and is it um, valid to generalize like this? Because as we have seen, um, to, to make a, a kind of space metaphor, Mitsubishi Electric Corporation and Arcage Space are on totally different planets. So different business, it's a different practices. So, so it sounds doubtful to put them in the same category and said they're not competitive. So, so I would like first to hear about, do you really think that the Japanese industry is not competitive or what part of the industry is not competitive? And, and based on this assessment, what is the government doing to try to either help part of the industry regain more competitiveness or support new kind of industry that are competitive and help them to be even more competitive and get more and more foreign markets? So this is a tough question uh, and I would like to hear first uh, Takeda-san about that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That's a very tough question. And it was uh, also coming from the audience. So it makes me very much nervous to answer to that question. But Kantam, as you've mentioned, when it comes to the competitiveness, it is difficult or it is impossible to generalize everybody into one uh, big bucket. We need to segmentize and make a, a discussion segment by segment. Now, uh, in uh, as a whole uh, space industry, comparing to US, China, or uh, India in, or, uh, in the future, when we compare, yes, uh, it is quite natural that we wanted to compare with other countries because uh, what is at stake is a national prestige. However, uh, there are some success. For example, ISS, when we do something uh, with the international union you know, collaboration, there are many things we can contribute. And actually, the questioner says that the India might take over. However, I'd like to say, Indian government, why don't you come and uh, work with us? Uh, because uh, only a limited number of Asian countries have the capability to launch rockets. And maybe for India, uh, Japan is the only like-minded country for India. So, of course, we are comp competing, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, at other times we cooperate. We should cooperate. Uh, when we compare uh, with others, actually, uh, during... 1980s, Japanese industry were expanding, however, because of the trade friction, the NHK's, uh, the satellite, broadcasting satellite was done. And uh, at that time, the Japanese uh, uh, um, space industry was still as at the gestation period. So uh, we are hardly hit, however, The traditional satellite and the locket is not everything when we consider the space industry. For example, uh, the US people would say that uh, Japan has a great uh, industry. Uh, for example, the Hodoyoshi project, the dated supply chain, uh, even small companies were able to create wonderful parts or wonderful components and also electronics. Uh, they have the uh, uh, the manufacturing know-how to create uh, one a tailor-made satellite. And uh, another example would be small satellite constellation, particularly SAR. Uh, in that area, we are one of the best in the world. And also the space debris, uh, the removal, 6U, becoming a global net. So we still have areas that we are very much proud of. And there is a lot of hope in those prayers and those uh, business. Uh, for the time being, I'd like to stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for answering this important question because I, I know it comes up 
all the time um, about whether the Japanese space sector is competitive. And I think you, you clearly explained that um, it depends, but there are definitely areas where, where Japan is, is at the top of the world. And, and you mentioned a, a few very relevant cases. Um, I would like to now to hear from, uh, from Fukuyo-san. Um, so arcade space is, is one of the hopes <laughs> of Japan in terms of, of I, I would say, innovation and, and competitiveness uh, in, in the field of constellation, like was mentioned by Takada-san. Are you hopeful for the, for the future competitiveness of the, the Japanese industry? And, and you, what do you think uh, companies like Arcade Space uh, will be contributing to Japanese export of space technology? Thank you for the question. Just like um, Professor Takada uh, gave an explanation very comprehensively, well, we too in Japan would like to make sure to work on the nano satellites. We think that there are many things that we can be competitive in the nano satellites. That's why we are promoting our business here. And as um, Professor Kanten, you mentioned, and you asked me now, there's still um, many other things we should be doing. And for us to be fully competitive in the competition landscape and to be cleverly competitive, if we are being questioned, um, there's still room for improvement. And as um, Professor Takara also mentioned, we are still in the stage of ideation or we'll, there's still many uh, stages of expectations and we have to be fleshing these out. Then when we think of the um, support from the government, we should also be questioning whether that's enough or not. And probably the answer would be no, and there should be more challenges to be taken and more um, subsidies to be given as well. But at the same time, when we think of Japan's strengths and how are we going to take advantage of these strengths that we have in Japan? There are many things we could be um, thinking. As um, Professor Takada mentioned, interpreter speaking and the speaker is breaking. Um, he's back. Well, um, I don't want to be boasting, but even with this um, micro satellite we have, um, there are many things we can still do. So uh, we should be trying to do what we can with what we have. As um, Professor Nakaska said, interpreter speaking again, the speaker is dropping off. He's back. Well, as was mentioned earlier, there has been around 2 billion yen of risk money that has been uh, procured. So how are we going to uh, make use of this and implement this into our businesses? Then, of course, there are some um, research funds as well as um, these should be um, wisely utilized. And in the maritime um, industry and research too, we are doing that kind of thing. And that's why. Um, if we think of utilizing this in Japan, well, that's one thing, but then we should be rolling this out to other countries as well. And uh, the point is uh, that we should be the role model to show to other countries, and that's how we should be uh, collaborating with each other. And uh, we're also welcome to being asked to make um, partnership and uh, the SpaceX um, done by one of those private sector. Well, that's how uh, we should be learning from each other and continue to grow. So first thing first, we should be showing and proving our technology. That's the first thing we should be doing. And by at the end of the day, we would like to have the government to wisely use our technology. And it's not just only the aeronautics industry, but interpreter speaking, he's breaking again. So that's what we'd like to do. Thank you very much, uh, Fukuyo-san. And we are actually a bit late already on, on the panel and we'll have to move to the, to the comments by Professor Shiroyama. So I, I would just like to ask Nakaska-sensei for one, one last comment. So you, you're yeah, as a professor, you. you have a lot of young students. Do you have a message of, of hope for uh, young Japanese students or other uh, oh, yeah, nationality yeah. in Japan about working in Japan in the space sector, in the new space industry? So finally, I'd like to say in Japanese. <laughs> Hi, 
Well, thank you very much. Uh, we have been discussing in some areas that Japan is uh, weak, and this is because we failed to welcome ch and challenge for the past several years. So we wanted to do uh, only what we, what we felt uh, comfortable. That is why uh, we are starting to see some delay in uh, control technology. So I think that the key word is the uh, challenge. Uh, the, because uh, the universities offers us to offers us an opportunity to challenge, we are able to do challenging works. And based on that uh, uh, work, uh, there will be venture companies. And venture companies have to make, uh, you know, uh, the, the challenge. Otherwise, they won't be able to survive. The, ch uh, the venture challenges, that's about, uh, that's all about the challenges. Uh, in Japan, uh, the Hayabusa was a great success. Uh, Hayabusa 2 uh, was an enormous challenge, and uh, we were able to get ourselves 15 years uh, maybe ahead of US or Europe. And this, of course, uh, it was a special in terms of a small uh, sized management. Uh, they don't have the paperwork so much, and they were very much uh, the, you know, the shop floor or the laboratory focused. And uh, uh, that was uh, the, you know, uh, the, uh, the reason for their success, we have to make sure in what way we'll be able to bring ourselves the best. Uh, the, this is uh, the, uh, the small the satellite constellation. That is uh, uh, where Japanese people would be able to perform better because you don't have to have a big farm. You can continue to continuously improve the small satellites one by one and uh, continue launching one by one. And if we have that kind of environment, we have a strong opportunity to come back strongly. Uh, well, this particularly to the students, uh, I would like to say that, that the university is where you should welcome challenge and acquire technology, and then the rest of your uh, life is going to be very bright. So that is the, the message I wanted to give to the students today. Thank you very much. I cannot think of a better way to, to end this panel. Uh, so sorry for the people who ask a question. We received a lot of questions at the last minutes, so it's a, it's a bit uh, too, uh, too short to answer. Uh, but uh, I would like to, to thank all the panelists for this really great discussion. Um, I think we, we really managed to bring a new perspective on, on the Japanese space sector, clarify sometimes some cliches that exist on the Japanese space sector and, and give good example for other countries, whether developed or developing, who would like to initiate a, a vibrant new space industry uh, that incorporate efficiently academia, government, and the industry. So again, thank you very much for your participation today. Thank you very uh, much. And now I, I would like to um, move Sorry, I was muted suddenly. Um, so comments by Professor Shiroyama. Professor Shiroyama is Professor of Public Administration at the Graduate School of Public Policy and at the Graduate School for Law and Politics, Director of the Institute of Future Initiatives and Director of the STIG program that organized this event, all of course at the University of Tokyo. His research focuses on international administration, science, technology, and public policy and public policy process. So Professor Shiroyama, we just heard a, a great keynote, uh, a wonderful panel with, with very varied perspective. Um, could you give us your thoughts and, and comments on the, on the overall session uh, and deliver the, the closing remarks? So we are a bit late on schedule, I apologize for that. So please take your time. It's okay if we, if we go a bit over the, the time. Uh, and thank you, Professor Kantan, for this opportunity. And again, I would like to thank Professor Okubo and the distinguished panelists for their talks. And to name each of these um, persons, again, thank you very much for the very dense and fruitful discussion. I guess my role is to give an overall comment. At first, uh, we were thinking on what kind of objective to set forth for this session. And, and in relation to that, let me just share some ideas or my thoughts. Well, when Professor Kanten introduced me to this session, we thought of STIG, the science, technology and innovation governance, the policy side, as well as the engineering side and other diverse fields. And we thought that we should be having an interdisciplinary 
way to come up with the policies and we thought that this is the kind of program and session it should be like as the objective and as a larger framework as was being introduced at the very beginning we have the cyrex framework and this is um, an initiative between grips and hitotsubashi and we university of tokyo get together as well as um, kyoto university and university of kyoto and osaka as well as the university of kyushu um, under the ministry of education's program to work on science and technology as well as to discuss the social matters and um, cyrex is one of those i'd say and then when we think of cyrex overall there's been four open forums being planned and have been planned and among that and this time we decided to uh, talk on the sixth STI basic plan and to be discussing what the keys would be like. And that's why we decided to come up with the topic of open innovation in this session. That's what the background. And that's why we came up with the case of space and what kind of elements are needed in the orbit. And I think we were able to highlight those matters today in the session. And as Professor Kanta mentioned in the opening remarks, well, we have um, the three uh, prestigious professors as the panelists, and it, we do fully understand that the background of these three panelists are exactly what we need to further promote the open innovation in the area of space. And just to reiterate, when we think of well, the network and ecosystem building, it's not just simply getting together many people from diverse background works. We have to respect um, the unique relationship and to get together along well. And I think everyone agrees on that. For example, um, as Professor Nakasuka mentioned in his speak, speech, it's not just only simply to partner with the big companies, but just like with the Hodoyoshi project to create a new supply chain and to work with the SMEs or the SMBs with certain technology to do networking with these businesses is one thing I should be mentioning. And I think um, the importance of diversity was being mentioned in one of the questions. And like um, Fukuyo-san's um, background was very interesting because um, he is now on the user side of the space technology, but um, he started off from how to do the monitoring of um, the globe, the, environment and then he was staying in brazil so in fact he is one of those who tried to connect the social issues and the space industry and he has this kind of management background that's another important element we should have been missing off and as professor takada said the risk money was another important issue or the factor we have to have a constant or stable resource funding that's another essence that we should uh, be putting into the center to play an important role to create an ecosystem. I think these are, well, these are what it takes to create the good ecosystem. On top of that, um, my second big point is that we have to be thinking of the competitive advantage of the universities and the fact that their students should be fully utilized. And that's, I think, what uh, we got to know from the opinions from many people today. As Professor Nakasuka also mentioned in his um, opinion, to have the students work hard and to come up with the actual satellite is what he mentioned. So this is kind of the on-the-job training, I'd say, and to do and to learn about project management. I think there's some benefits on that side as well, and not to do this on one university, but to form a consortium like UNICEF and to work together with other people and to also foster human resources that can do project management as well as to foster these talent in the area of technology. I think this is important. And as um, Professor Kanton also mentioned uh, a long way, I think this should also be, uh, this is also part of the research project, but let's say to have the network among uh, universities on a global level uh, should be well thought of. And this is, it to some extent about rolling out technology and to some other extent, this could also be um, the science technology diplomacy. This could be another role that these um, relationship comes up with. For example, there's some relationship with the university in the Philippines and Professor Nakasuka, Professor Fukuyo and Takada also mentioned about Vietnam, Rwanda, or the relationship with UAE. 
um, I think it's going to be very interesting to analyze the relationship and this kind of university-based network will create a sustainable partnership and it will also help um, the counterparts to have some incentives on human resources development. And this could also, uh, these people um, who were involved in this project would one day in the future become the head of the uh, science bureau on, in their country. And I think to continue this kind of initiative is important. Well, more or less, I think I've been able to cover what I wanted to say. But the point here is, well, it's easy to say about ecosystem, but it's, it, it takes a lot of challenge to really form the actual ecosystem. Then we have to be thinking of what kind of new or innovative um, um, ideas to bring in. And that's how uh, we should be continuing to enhance the relationship among the universities and to come up with actual ideas. And I hope that this session has helped people to think about this. And STIG is exactly an occasion to discuss this kind of issues. Today's topic was um, on space, but we could do the same thing on biology or medical industry or in AI. There are various um, industries that we could think of because these things are really happening. And we could also come up with a platform to compare all these things again. Um, I would like to encourage everyone to join this kind of seminars in the future again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shiroima. I think it was the absolutely perfect uh, overview and, and the, the core message uh, of the session that, that you summarized now for us. So thanks a lot. So we are arriving at the end of this session. Uh, so I would like to thank very warmly uh, University of Tokyo Executive Vice President Tatsuya Okubo for his great keynote. All the panelists, Professor Nakasuka, Mr. Takada, and Mr. Fukuyo for the wonderful panel discussion. And finally, Professor Shiroyama for providing us with analysis and closing comments. Um, before uh, giving the floor uh, back to Mr. Kikuchi from the Cyrex Center, I would like to mention that if you are interested in learning more about space policy, the STIG program is launching a series of monthly webinars um, in English, but uh, most of the time with uh, English Japanese interpretation. Uh, and the first event, uh, the first webinar that we are launching will be next week uh, on the 8th, uh, so Tuesday, 8th of February. And it will be on the space policy of ASEAN countries at the occasion of a book that we just uh, published at the STIG program along with Professor Shiroyama. So if you're interested, uh, please go to the STIG uh, program website. Um, I don't know exactly, the, the but it's STIG at UTOKYO something. Uh, and, and please check our series of, of monthly webinars. Thanks a lot uh, for attending today. And now I will give the floor to Mr. Kikuchi of the Cyrex Center. Thank you very much. Uh, the STIG website, uh, through the chat, uh, we have just sent the URL uh, to the, the speaker and the panelists. Thank you very much. And we are very sorry that we had to start uh, with a short delay. Uh, well, uh, next time uh, we are going to have uh, the uh, a program. Uh, uh, entitled the Biden Administration Science and Technology and Innovation Policy focusing on science and in science integrity from eight o'clock uh, on the 10th of February. You need to register yourself. Uh, so uh, please uh, register yourself if you are interested in and questionnaire uh, will be uh, shown when you exit the room. Uh, please uh, fill in. Uh, we appreciate your work feedback. And also we are going to um, send the link uh, of the next meeting after this meeting. Thank you very much indeed.